In our previous tutorial, we covered how to create a diminishing list family where we've selected A here and A doesn't exist here and doesn't exist here and then the previous one doesn't exist here. But the problem with this one is that if I select B here, then B will still exist over on the left hand side. So how might we resolve that? Let's go over to this selection here. And if we select one of these options, so if I select B over here and I come back over to here, will B exist? No, it doesn't. We've got A there. So now I've selected A and B for this row. We've only got C remaining. If I go over here and select D, and we've only got D remaining. If I go all the way over to the right hand side and select A here, I can go to B for example, and A doesn't exist, I can select C. If I wanna go over here, I've only got B left, and I've got D left. As you can see, the only downside of this approach is that you're going to get these invalid warnings. Uh, but if you're happy with leaving these invalid warnings up, then by all means, go ahead with this tutorial. If not, go to the previous tutorial, and this might be the option for you. So let's get started. Open up a new Google Sheet and what we're going to do across the top is we'll have option one, two, three, and four. One, option two, option three, and option four. Nice, and then we're gonna leave a little space here and then we will have all selections. And this from E across is just going to be our working out. And you could put this on a separate Google Sheet, but we're going to make it easy here and put it on here. So we're going to call uh, H1, we'll call this remaining. And that's going to be the remaining option values that the user can use. And we'll select that. Cool. So I'm going to click column E and column G. We're going to make these a little bit shorter here so you can see what's going on. And we'll separate them with a black so we know we've got a nice little division here. We'll keep option one this color. We'll make this one a nice light green. And option three, a nice sky blue. Keep things nice and pale, relaxing. And the next one is a option orange. We'll try and channel a bit of Bob Ross here. All right, so our next one is going to be a remaining. So it's gonna be a list of options that are the length of all our selections. For our selections, we'll just keep it simple. We'll call this one A, B, C, and D. And that means we have one, two, three, four selections. So there's gonna be one, two, three, four selections across. They're fairly short selections. So we can just make this a little bit smaller and then uh, we'll put a little black fill here so we know we've got a spacing. Great. To create our drop down menu, we need to be able to remove an item that appears, any item that appears here has to be removed from our all selections list. What we can do here is to match anything in this list. So I'll do a bit of working out over here so you can see what I'm doing because it's quite a complex formula. So for example, if I have a here in option one, we wanna only see B, C, and D here, B, C, and D. So we can use the match function to find values that are in a range. So if I go match here, and my first thing is my search key, and that's going to be A, for example, and if then I can go comma. So I wanna find match somewhere within a range, and my range is going to be this range here. And it tells me that match is available in one here. So we just need to have one more search type and this search type here is going to be zero, which basically means finds the exact value when the range is unsorted. Otherwise it's gonna come up with NA. We don't want it approximating things or, or matching up or down. So we'll call this zero here and we will go Enter. Cool, so we know A exists, but we wanna check all these values here, A, B, C, and D. We can use the array formula to do this. So I'm gonna type in array. And now we can use an array basically to iterate through A, B, C, and D and check if any one of those is available here. So array formula match. And what we need to change here is this F2 and include the range to F5. All right, let's close that. And let's see what happens. So we can see here, we've got our first option A, 
there's a one here, but there's NA, NA, and NA. Let's just check over in this option three here. If I type in B, B here, we can see that it, that it is in position three, okay? If I typed in C here, we can see that's in position two, and D, we can see that's in position four. All right, let's get rid of some of these NAs. Now, we want to see these NAs, but we don't want to see these numbers. So what we can do now is we can say if there is a match, if the match is equal to NA, we want it to be true. So we can say use the is NA function to check if the NA exists. Okay, so now we can say in our first one, so A is NA, so that is false because A is there. Uh, is B NA? Yes, that is true because B doesn't exist here. And C is false because C exists here and D is true because D doesn't exist here. We're almost there. So the next thing we can do now is to run a filter to filter out all the false values and then only display any value that has an association of true to it. So here we can go uh, filter and we need to select this range. So that's, that's the range we want to display and our condition is going to be this one here. So be closed and then let's hit enter. So now we've got B and D because we've got A, C in here and B and D are the only ones remaining. We don't want them running down, we want them running across so they associate to each row um, as we drag this down. So let's uh, transpose this. Awesome. Now this works out pretty good. So we've got B and D here. We can see B, C and D there. And we've got A, B, C and D there. But if I go uh, A, B, C and D, we're going to get an NA again, which we don't want to see. So to resolve this, we'll use the if NA error function. And we'll say if NA, we don't want you to do anything. So we'll just close the brackets around that. And now you can say it's coming up with nothing. All right, so we've worked out our compound formula here. Let's select that, hit Control C and hit Tab to get out of the formula and go over to H2 and hit Control V to put it in. So select on the function menu and Control V. Okay, if we drag this down as it is, we're going to get uh, these values here are going to change. So we need to lock them in place. So let's uh, click on here and hit F4 for that one and F4 for that one, so it's not going to change. But we want our A2 to D2 to change because we want this moving down our rows as we go. Let's hit Tab to get out of that. And let's get rid of that. So we've got a sample up here and we can see what we're doing. Cool. So we've got our first row of formulas here. Let's just drag these down for a small journey. Let's go down to uh, say 50 here. Let's get rid of these rows, so messy. Go delete rows. All right, cool. And now we've got a full list of what's remaining. And now we just need to add in our drop down data validation. So I'm going to select um, A2, hold shift down to B2 and control shift down arrow to get to the bottom. And we'll go data, data validation. And here we want to select this range over in our working over here. So we're going to click this. Select this range and it's just going to be the first row here. Now what we're going to do now is put in an equal sign and we want to lock in our column values and we can do this with a dollar sign. But we don't want to lock in our row values. We want them to change each time as they go down so they follow each one of these responses so we can see how many, how many we've got left for each row. So let's click on OK. And we can click on reject input or show warning, and then we can hit save. Great. So now we've got D, that's reduced down, and the last one is B. Cool. We can go over to this side and click on C, and we can come back over to here. We've got A, there's no C left. Go back over to D, let's click on B. We can go over to option two and D. We can start down here, the same again and everything's working. Now, why is this little invalid input coming up? Well, because now each time you click on a value, it's actually being removed from your data validation list. Again, if you're not happy with seeing this invalid value, then head back to the previous tutorial 
But if you're okay with seeing this invalid value, that's fine, stick with it. If you want, you can right click up here and insert a note for your, for your users and say, uh, ignore the validation error. Okay, so that's it for using drop down lists that slowly diminish as you select them across a row. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please click the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe and click on that notification bell because it helps these tutorials out to more and more people. Please check out the description below for the written tutorial and more on data validation. And until next time.